Now let us talk about microbes in industrial products. That means we are talking about something which is done on a very large scale. And here also we have a long list of things. First, alcoholic beverages or just fermented beverages. When we are talking about the fermented beverages, then we will have to use two things. Fermented beverages can be divided into two categories, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. In alcoholic, again, the same reaction of anaerobic breakdown where alcohol formation takes place, we have to go to that level. And in this alcoholic beverages, again, there are two categories, distilled and undistilled. When this uh, yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, when we use them for this fermentation to obtain alcoholic uh, beverages, we keep the raw material and depending upon the raw material, the drinks are going to be different. Like if you use grapes, the alcoholic drink which is obtained will be known as wine. If we use malt, then the drink is going to be beer and so on. The raw material is one major factor. Plus, if this fermentation is taking place and if the alcohol concentration increases, say around 13%, 14%, then this alcoholic concentration starts to kill the yeast. So in nature, we cannot obtain more than 13%, more than 12% of alcohol concentration. Then how come certain drinks have about 40% of alcohol or even more than that? They are the distilled ones. So what is done is, suppose malt is taken or any kind of raw material is taken, yeast is placed in it. When the alcohol concentration reaches say somewhere between 10 and 12%, you take the complete thing out. Heat and boil it so that only alcohol evaporates. When this alcohol evaporates, you condense it. This is distillation condensation. And what are you condensing? You are just separating alcohol. So here you can even get 100% alcohol. So the distilled ones, they have higher percentage of alcohol. It can go up to 40-45%. And here we have drinks like whiskey, rum, gin. These are the drinks which have high alcohol concentration. Whereas beer, wine, they have comparatively lesser because they are undistilled. So in nature, normally the alcohol percentage reaches 10 to 12 because after that it is going to become toxic to the yeast itself. So these are alcoholic drinks. Non-alcoholic drinks are tea and coffee. If you take tea and coffee, we get used to a particular brand. There are so many different uh, types of teas available uh, with different brand names. The plant is the same. The leaves are plucked from Thea sinensis. The name of the plant is Thea sinensis. That is tea plant. The young leaves are plucked. They are sent to one factory. They are sent to second factory. They are sent to third factory where these leaves are allowed to grow with some microbes. And which microbe they use? Because we won't have any example here, because these companies, they don't disclose which microbe they use. And that particular microbe imparts a particular aroma to that tea or coffee. And that is why those who are habitual of, you know, drinking one type of, uh, say, tea. I am used to drinking tea of, one, of a particular brand. And if some other brand 
is given to me, I can easily make out that this is different. It is not my brand. So what is that unique thing? The unique thing is the microbe. So which microbe is grown on the leaves for how much duration will decide that aroma, that particular flavor. So here we have tea and coffee. So these are non-alcoholic but here also fermentation is done. So everywhere we are using the microbes and this is done on a large scale. So this is the microbe used in industry that is industrial products. Then we have one more thing which we obtain from microbes and those are antibiotics. Antibiotics are taken as medicines. Antibiotics are used to treat bacterial diseases invariably. Now what exactly is an antibiotic and then we will come to the discovery part. Antibiotics are the chemicals secreted by bacteria and some fungi to kill other bacteria or inhibit their growth. Now how does it work? Suppose there is a nutritive medium on which a particular type of bacterium is growing. Now if this bacterium grows, it will multiply here and all the food, all the space which is available is available for this bacterium. Suppose another type of bacterium comes and falls on this. Now there is going to be competition. So there will be sharing of food, there will be sharing of space and these bacteria, they will start to uh, release some chemicals. Suppose this blue bacterium releases some chemicals. This is an antibiotic. Antibiotic. Anti is against, bio is life. So, this chemical may kill these bacteria. And now imagine if this bacterium is a disease causing bacterium in our body. So then we can use this antibiotic as a medicine to kill this bacterium when it causes disease in our case. So bacteria has produced antibiotic to reduce its competition. We are using those antibiotics as medicines. Discovery of antibiotic was a by chance discovery. Alexander Fleming was working with Staphylococcus. Bacteria for some work. And when the petri dishes in which the Staphylococcus bacterium was there were kept after the experiment for washing. After a few days, he observed that there was some fungus. The fungus is commonly known as mold. So wherever that fungus grew on that petri dish, this bacterium was not growing. And then it was discovered or he only found out that this uh, fungus was penicillium notatum and it produced some chemical which was not letting this grow. And because the uh, fungus was penicillium notatum, that antibiotic was called Penicillin, obtained from Penicillium notatum, because this was the mold growing on that uh, petri dish. So wherever this chemical was there, Streptococcus did not grow. So Alexander Fleming was working with Strepto Staphylococcus, but ended up discovering penicillin. Two other scientists, Ernest Chain and Howard Florey, they actually gave the therapeutic value of this. The two scientists, that is Ernest Chain and 
Howard Flory. They gave the therapeutic, that is its medicinal importance. Penicillium was used enormously after World War II. After World War II, the wounded soldiers, the wounds were getting infected. And to treat them, penicillium was used and it was very, very effective. And so it was called wonder drug. Nowadays, we use this wonder drug term for all antibiotics. Now, which antibiotic can be used as a medicine? It should have some properties. For example, it should have a wide spectrum effect. That means one antibiotic can be used to treat multiple diseases. And all the antibiotics which we use like streptomycin, erythromycin and all tetracycline, they are all broad spectrum. There is only one exception that is penicillin. Penicillin is a narrow spectrum. It can treat or it is used to treat only few diseases. But for those diseases it is very, very, very effective. So it is a narrow spectrum but in general antibiotics have a broad spectrum. One antibiotic can be used to treat many diseases. Number two, it should not harm the friendly bacteria of our intestine. Should not harm friendly bacteria of our gut. Like E. coli. We have E. coli in our elementary canal which is beneficial for us. So we don't want any kind of drug or medicine which would harm our friendly flora we say. It should be quick acting, no side effects and it should not develop resistance. That means you should not get used to that that you start taking a particular antibiotic and after 10 days, you know, your body becomes resistant and your, it stops responding to that drug. So that is why these are the properties which must be seen in the antibiotic so that it can be used as a medicine. Salmon Waxman was the one who gave the term antibiotic. Salmon Waxman. He was the one who gave this term antibiotic. So antibiotics are used for many things. One is medicine to treat bacterial diseases. This is one use of antibiotic. Another, it is used to transport meat. Meat if it is to be transported, like uh, the salt water fishes or the marine fishes are available only wherever there is a coastline. Now from there, if that fish has to be transported to an area where there is no sea, then it is going to take some time. And meat is an organic matter which is going to invite bacteria. So how do we do it? We take that meat piece and spray a layer of antibiotic. Spray a layer of antibiotic on this. And if a bacterium falls on this, then this antibiotic is going to kill that bacterium. So it is also used as a preservative for the transport of uh, meat, especially meat products. So this is another uh, importance on a commercial scale or on the industrial level. 